Hey, I wanted to show you a couple of accessories for your kit lens that are inexpensive and you can have a lot of fun with them. As a matter of fact, I've been uh, having quite a bit of fun with these little things um, here uh, for the past couple years. And uh, all it takes is the 14 to 42 millimeter kit lens that you see here, which comes, I think, with most cameras, or you can get it as a very inexpensive add-on uh, when you purchase a, a pen camera or an OMD camera. Um, yeah. So the first one I want to show you is the uh, the macro attachment. It's right here. This attaches right to the front of the lens. Here, let me take the hood off. It's easier to do it that way. Now, the ring on this uh, on this lens, on the kit lens, is a uh, 37 millimeter um, a diameter. And uh, this macro attachment that you can get for, I think, less than $100, much less, um, hooks right onto it uh, like this. You just screw it onto, onto the front element. It's a plastic thread, so be careful. I mean, the one on the macro attachment is metal, but the lens itself is plastic, so be careful not to, to damage it. But there you go, now you've got a macro lens. And it works really good, particularly at the long edge. Uh, you can get a sort of like a wide angle macros if you keep it at the 14 millimeter, um, the, the wide edge, uh, the, the, wide, uh, the wide end of it. But if you push it to 42, then you can get really nice close-ups with it. Now this one, the macro converter that I'm talking about, is called the uh, the MCON dash PO2. Um, and the neat thing about it, you would think, well, this is it. Even if this is it, it works great. But no, you can actually use this macro converter for a few more lenses. So let's uh, set this one aside for now. We're going to stick it over there. Um, you can use it for the 35 millimeter f1.8. You can use it for the, um, well, the 35. This is the 17, I apologize. Um, 17 millimeter. You can use it for the 25 millimeter f1.8 and the 45 millimeter f1.8. All these neat little lenses from Olympus that are really good and quite wide and then very sharp for their price. So what you do here is the, the, the converter comes with an adapter ring that you unscrew. And uh, then you're left with um, a diameter of 46 millimeters on the ring itself on the thread. And guess what? 46 millimeters is exactly the thread measurement of two of these lenses. See, this is the, the 17 millimeter lens. It's got a uh, 46 millimeter thread. And then uh, you simply screw this on after you've taken on that off that ring. And there we go. You've got a uh, 17 millimeter or 35 millimeter equivalent macro lens now. Now clearly, don't expect this to perform the same as a dedicated macro lens, but it's really good. I've been using it for a couple of years, like I said, and it's, I've been having so much fun with these. Maybe I'll put some, uh, some photos at the end of this video just to give you an idea of what you can, do, what you can get with them. So this is the, the 35 millimeter. Now let's go to the 50, works the same way. Simply screw it on, and the 50 works surprisingly well as a macro lens. I mean, with for macro stuff with with this attachment, it's so sharp and it's so beautiful, and the bokeh is just wonderful. So there you go. You can also do the 50 millimeter. Now, when it comes to the uh, the 45 millimeter, that's a little different because this one. We're back to the um, the 37 uh, 
the 37 millimeter diameter for the thread. This one has a smaller, a smaller diameter, but it's still so wide. I don't know if you can see just how, how wide open this lens is. It's so, so beautiful. And so what you do is you take that adapter ring again, you threw this onto, you threw, you screw, you screw this onto the, the front element, and then you put this onto the adapter ring once again. And you've got another macro lens that you can use. Now, I will tell you this, the, um, the distance is different, obviously it's different from when you use this macro converter on the 15 millimeter. You have to get a little further back, but uh, that means you also get a shallower depth of field um, because it is the 45 millimeter after all, and it's renowned for the sharpness in the bokeh, right? So you get very interesting depth of field um, on this. So it's a different perspective on all of these lenses, right? With the kit lens, because it's uh, it's at 5.6, it's f5.6 f5 when you push it out to uh, to the telephoto end or well medium telephoto lens, the 42 millimeter, which is I guess 84 millimeters and 35 millimeter equivalent. The uh, maximum aperture there is f5.6, and so you're going to get more depth of field. But with each of these things, it's it's really wonderful. Uh, and it's just so much fun to play with and inexpensive so that's the macro converter now uh, guess what if you also have the easy lens right the pancake 14 to 42 which is the more premium version of, of this uh, zoom um, this one has an electronic motor inside that uh, tells it when to go out and when to come back in but but guess what and this one also has a metal mount unlike uh, this kit lens which is um, you know plastic mount but it's still very good um, when I bought this one it was a little I mean I bought this one secondhand this kit lens because I just wanted to have it right um, and uh, or rather I think it came with one of my I think it came with one of my cameras and it was a bit soft and I sent it in for service <laughs> <laughs> and you would say, well, that's silly sending in a kit lens to get serviced. But that's okay because they fixed the autofocus mechanism and it's quite sharp now. Really, really good. So for a kit lens, remarkably good. But what I wanted to tell you is that guess what? This uh, pancake uh, lens, 14 to 42, also has a 30, uh, 37 millimeter um, thread on the front. And so you can take this macro uh, converter and screw it onto this one as well. And there you go, now you've got another macro lens that you can use. Um, and this is solid construction, this converter. Don't think it's some flimsy plastic thing. This is metal and the lens is really good, really good. I mean, you, you, you get no fringing, no weird aberration. Um, this is good stuff, very good, yeah. So you can also use it on the pancake lens. Now, if you have an older camera, right, and you may be wondering, well, I have the original version of this uh, 14 to 42 millimeter kit lens, right? It's the one that shipped with the EP1 and the EP2. Um, I have this one as well. Now, this one though, um, the uh, the front thread is no longer uh, 37. It's also not uh, 46 this is a 40.5 but it does have a thread and that means that you can get adapter rings right these are really inexpensive rings now I don't have the right combination ring to to enable me to hook up the macro converter to this lens uh, but you can go to your local camera store and just tell them look I need something to adapt a 40.5 thread to either 37 or 46 uh, millimeter thread so and they'll help you out they have these things in stock pretty much all of the time so and these are really inexpensive it's like a dollar or two for one of these things the metal uh, so you can also if you have this kit lens the original kit lens that shipped with pen cameras you can also use this one
right. Let's uh, put this away now. Okay. Now you would think that uh, we'd be done. No. <laughs> No, because, because uh, I have the white converter to talk about as well. So let me put away the macro converter, which just to review, right? You can use it with this many lenses. So it's a really profitable investment. Let's put it that way. I mean, you can do a lot of playing around with the macro converter, this thing. Five lenses that you can readily use it with and if you invest in um, a ring or two uh, uh, for a thread conversion or thread adapters, then you can probably use it on the uh, original kit lens as well. So that would be a, a sixth lens that you could use it with. Right. Okay, so that's enough for the macro converter. We're, we're done with that one. Let's put away the prime lenses again because now we're going to talk about the, the kit zoom once more. Now, we're talking about a wide converter now. This is really cool. It won't work on this, and I'll show you why in just a bit. This is the wide converter, and this is, I mean, this is, even though it's inexpensive, it's pretty serious. I mean, look at the front element on this. It's quite wide, and it's going to gather quite a bit of light. Um, there's the, the back of it. Now this is pretty interesting. Um, this is called the uh, white converter WCON-P01. This one hooks onto the lens hood attachment of the kit lens. And uh, because there is no lens hood attachment uh, on the original kit lens, right, the 14 to 42 that shipped with the Pen EP1 and Pen EP2, uh, then this won't work on it maybe there's something you can finagle to get it to working I don't know honestly but I know that I can't readily hook it onto that one so it only works with this kit lens which fortunately shipped with EP3, EP5 uh, the, the OMD cameras as well or you can get it as an add-on so and this one converts the the 14 millimeter angle to they don't give you a particular uh, millimeter um, focal range that it readily converts it to. They give you like a, uh, a zero point something X and I can't remember right away right now exactly what that conversion is but I did the math once and if I remember correctly it converts it into an either 11 millimeter or 12 millimeter lens uh, at the wide end and it's all, all only recommended to be used at the wide end so once you put this on don't go zooming around with the lens because you, you just won't get proper focus. This is meant only for the wide end, right? It's supposed to make it wider. So let me show you how it works, right? You've got here the front element with the attachment for the lens hood. And you take this thing and you attach it just like a lens hood. And it snaps into place. And there we go. Now you, you've just turned a 14 millimeter uh, lens uh, with an aperture of f3.5 at the wide end into an 11 millimeter lens with the same aperture f3.5. There's no light loss with this thing because look look how wide it is at the front. So you're not losing any light with it. And this is once again metal. I believe it's aluminum. I could be wrong, but it looks like it's metal construction. So it's really nice and the lens is really good. I mean, they really did a very good job on, on this. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you will get some barrel distortion, right? Mild barrel distortion, very mild. It's not a fisheye, remember. There's also a fisheye attachment, by the way, for, uh, for the kit lens. And you might be able to attach that onto some other um, some other uh, lenses as well, maybe. Although it'd be weird to attach a fisheye to like a 50 millimeter or 45. But anyway, this is the wide uh, converter, and you can use it to do maybe architectural photography, and then you can do a bit of perspective uh, correction either in uh, Olympus Workspace or in uh, your program of choice like Lightroom or Photoshop or whatever whatever you use to edit your photos. 
So yeah, this is the, the wide converter. And it can only be used on this, as far as I know. But it's a, a high quality piece of kit. And if you happen to find yourself, maybe when you're traveling or maybe you're outside and you want to take wider landscapes or wider architectural shots, maybe fit more of a room into the photo, then this is going to be great. I wouldn't advise you to take uh, anything like crowd photos or street photographs with this because obviously at this wide uh, perspective that it affords you 11 or 12 millimeters you're going to get weird facial distortion and stretching of the arms and the legs and, and, and the like so don't do that. Um, it's, it's not a rectilinear um, converter. Um, so. And even if it was, you wouldn't be, you wouldn't want to be using a, like a seven to fourteen millimeter lens to take portraits or, yeah, or photographs of people. It doesn't work that way. They're good for landscapes and architectural stuff, right? So, um, that's how you can get more value out of your kit lens, and you don't have to spend a lot of money on getting new lenses. Right there. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.